A Schneider observed it's practically impossible for a man at sea level to voluntarily hold his breath until he becomes unconscious. Touch wood, we haven't witnessed it, and I've worked with about seven and a half thousand people, but we don't hyperventilate prior to the breath hold. Um, and I know this might be a little bit over your heads at the moment. I will tie it in, so don't worry if it's kind of you're wondering what's he talking about. Um, I'll tie it in a little bit better. Yeah. The break point is probably depending on the stimuli that reach the brain from the diaphragm. As you hold your breath, what is happening is that the brain is noticing that there's a, a change in blood gases. So within the brain, within the medulla, you've got a respiratory center. And your respiratory center has two centers, inspiration and expiration. Your respiratory center is monitoring CO2, blood pH, and to a lesser extent oxygen. If you hold your breath for a long period of time, your CO2 is going to increase and your pH is going to drop. Your respiratory center in the brain notices the change to CO2 increase and it sends stimulus to your breathing muscles to breathe to get rid of the excess CO2. So when CO2 increases in the blood, your respiratory center reacts by sending a message via the phrenic nerve to the diaphragm. Your diaphragm is your main breathing muscle. Your diaphragm during rest moves down by 1.5 centimeters, creates a negative pressure in the thorax, and as a result, you take an inhalation. The break point, though, isn't specifically CO2. So the precise mechanisms explaining the break point, they're unknown. This paper was written in 2006. It hasn't changed since then. Um, and you see, there has been investigations since 1965, 1968, so, you know, there's almost, what, over 50 years of research looking into it. What is the mechanism that causes you to resume breathing during a breath hold? It's not known. CO2 will have some good effect, but also your brain is going to be monitoring the discomfort of the diaphragm. When you do breath holding, you're going to feel these breathing muscles contracting. You're going to feel them. So we're adding an extra load onto this breathing muscle. Physical training doesn't tra train your diaphragm. Physical training doesn't train your diaphragm. You can do all the physical training in the world. The only exception that will train your breathing muscles is swimming and probably free diving. Swimming because your body is against the water and there's a load against your breathing. Um, free diving because you're doing breath holding. So we can get into the diaphragm to train it to enlarge the strength or increase the strength of the diaphragm by virtue of what we're doing. Breath tolling, arterial or end tidal pressure drops from 100, sorry, falls below its normal level of 100, and carbon dioxide. These are normal blood gas read readings. 100 millimeter of mercury in the blood, 40 millimeter of mercury of CO2. At the maximum inflation of air, end, carb, sorry, end tidal O2, oxygen is going to drop from 100 to 62. So if you take a big breath in and you hold, your oxygen levels are going to drop from 100 to 62 before you feel the need to breathe, before you have to resume breathing. And your carbon dioxide is going to increase from 40 millimeter of mercury to 54.